a psalm before the verses of praise. A song for the dedication of your people. I praise you, God Almighty, for lifting me up above my enemies. The Lord that heals, I called to you and you healed me. You kept my soul from destruction and preserved me from darkness. Sing to the King of Kings and praise the name. Your anger is brief, but your love lasts forever. The night may bring weeping, but the dawn will bring peace. When everything was good in my life, I felt strong because you made me strong. But when I couldn't feel you, I was terrified. I pleaded with the Lord, what good would my death be? How can I honor and praise you if I am dead? Be compassionate to me and help me. You turned my sadness into dancing. You have taken away my darkness and dressed me in light so that my soul will pray, play, praise you eternally. Adonai, I will praise you forever. And now we move to a Kaddish. May your name be great and holy in the world which you have made in your way. May the presence of the Holy One, blessed be, be over you in your life and the lifetime of your people. The greatness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is beyond words. Blessed is the Lord. For those who choose to be chosen, for students and teachers of Torah, here or anywhere, may you all have blessing, may you all have peace and life. Now we move to the Amidah. Take a moment to catch your breath, to feel centered, to feel peace, to feel a sense of stillness and quietness as you prepare for this community prayer, this prayer of oneness, not just with God, but with all of us together here. I am grateful to you, protector of all, our God and God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, God of Sarah, God of Yitzhak, God of Rivka, God of Jacob, God of Leah, God of Rachel. Adon Olam, who created goodness, who inspired us to repair the world in compassion, King, Queen, Savior, and Shield. Blessed are you, Shield of the Patriarchs, Shield of the Matriarchs, and of us all. Master of the world, give us knowledge. After giving us knowledge, accept our repentance. After accepting our repentance, forgive us of our shortcomings. After forgiving us our shortcomings, redeem us, heal us, bless our lives, bring us together, judge us fairly, defeat the evil in us. After defeating the evil in us, strengthen our inclination to do good. Now that we are holy before you, make the earth heavenly for us. Hear our prayers and make us worthy of your goodness. Baruch Ata Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Baruch Atah Adonai Osei HaShalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch Atah Adonai Somei Atifila. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayers. Amen. So now I'd like to do a Kabbalistic meditation that I've been working on. Um, we did this last week. Uh, unfortunately, there were some issues with um, the internet access, and so I think some of you who are watching it, it might have gotten cut off, and uh, you were unable to uh, catch it. So I want to try something uh, here. And this is a prayer that's developed from the idea of the Etz Chaim, of the Tree of Life. And so think about what a tree is for a moment, and recognize that your body is like a tree. So we have our toes that sort of immediately connect us to the ground. That's like the roots of a tree. You have your body here, which is like a, a trunk. Um, it's what holds everything together. And then you have your arms and your fingers, which are like branches on this great tree of life. And in keeping with Misha Berach, which we are doing today for Shlema Ben Gideon. Uh, we are doing it for Rivka. We are doing it for Asher. And we are also doing it for, I believe, Steve as well had asked um, for Misha Berach as well. Um, in keeping with that, I want you to think of the body as being like a tree of life. And think of every cell that's in your body. And think about for a moment the fact that the cells in a human body, very similar to the cells that are in an animal's body. And um, although they're different, a cell is what makes up a plant's body, for lack of a better word. 
think about this really interesting connection that exists through all things in nature that all have these little building blocks and you go further and further you go from the cell to the molecule you go from the molecule to the atom you go to the atom and you break it apart and you notice that at the most fundamental simple singular level all things are made of the same things and there's like a thumbprint on cr the created world on the world that we live in it's this thumbprint that's uh, the work of Hashem that exists in all things it's that spark of life uh, that the Hasidim teach about and you can find that in every little piece of every single little thing and it connects us and binds us all together in the greatest sense of the universe what a miracle to think of the fact that the ocean is uh, similarly composed to us and that uh, some asteroid uh, millions and millions and millions of light years away has some of the same essence the same stuff that makes up a newborn it's really amazing to think about that so I want you to take that spirit that spirit of interconnectedness in the universe and I want you to try a prayer just sitting down put your feet together if you can and if you can't just reflect on what that sense is think of your feet as being together with your toes imagine your toes imagine your toes as being like the root that goes inside the earth that's drawing up this energy and it goes up your body and it goes up through your legs through your knees through your thighs and it works its way up it goes further and further up into the crown the top of the sephirot and every single part of you begins to feel this energy it's flowing through your own Etz Chaim. It's flowing through each sephirot that is connected to, or sephira that's connected to your body. And I want you to think about your arms as being limbs and just do what feels natural. Stretch them out if you want or keep them to yourself, whatever you like. But begin to feel that God energy, that sense of shalom, that sense of peace flowing through you. And I want you to think about each arm one side you have refuah and other side you have shleima so you have these twin pieces that make up a prayer for healing and i want you to just close your eyes and feel that refuah shleima feel that sense of peace and connectedness that you're having from each hand so you have refuah and you have shleima and just take a moment to sort of feel at peace with that, to connect with that, and to hold in your hand almost the Rafua and the Shlema. Just take a moment to relax. Think about that. And if you want to, you can even say Misha Berach. Even if you don't know the words, just say Misha Berach, or say Rafua Shlema. Both the work. Begin to feel that earthly vibration flowing through your personal tree of life. We feel that sense of peace and that sense of calm. And together we give a blessing to everyone out there, Misha Berach, Rafua Shlema, to all of our friends, to anyone around the world who needs healing. And I hope that you have a sense of healing from this experience that we've had together. So welcome to Punk Torah Prayer Services. I hope that you enjoyed that little davening that we did. It was a little bit different this time. I wanted to do something special here, um, offer up something different. Um, you know, every week we try to do something that's a little bit different. Um, you know, I hope that you guys liked that. We can do a little bit more of that sometime. If there's anyone who missed 
uh, any of the prayers that we just did, uh, let me know and we can go on ahead and add those in as well. Um, so, you know, short day today because we don't have Michael here, obviously, to really engage in conversation. Uh, but I wanted to know what's on your guys' mind? What have you been thinking about lately? Um, what sorts of issues are going on in your lives? Let's come up with some things to talk about today. Um, it's been a pretty easy day for us here. Um, so, um, you know, haven't really had a whole heck of a lot going on. And, um, but I will say that um, One Shoal, which is a project we're working on, and it uh, looks like David over there wanted to know more about that. We can discuss that. Um, that's kind of the biggest thing that we have in the works. Um, looks like, you know, probably half of the people in here know about One Shoal and what we're doing with it. Kind of discuss it a little bit. One Shoal is a project that Punk Toro is working on. It's going to be the first ever trans-denominational uh, synagogue entirely on the internet. And it's going to exist because you guys are going to uh, make it exist. Uh, we are building the, the sort of site itself, but really what we need are volunteers. We have about five people that are actively involved in this. But those of you who come to the service regularly um, know that this is going really well. Uh, the synagogues down the street from where I live can't create Minion the way that we do, and they are multi-million dollar um, projects you know, that have existed for 30, 40, 50 years, and us here online have created something uh, comparable to that, if not greater in some ways. Um, and I think that it's a really cool thing and that this is something that we need to expand further. So we, what we want to do online is we want to have all of the same services that a brick and mortar synagogue would have. So it's going to be everything from three day a week services, Kabbalah Shabbat, uh, doing a Saturday Torah reading, having classes, having lectures, having some social services because I know some of us are out of work, some of us um, need some help as far as um, you know, as far as uh, financial help uh, with certain things that are going on in our lives, maybe, you know, we're having trouble making ends meet, we need some help with some social services types of things. Also, to be a clearinghouse for Zeraka programs, uh, you know, great charitable opportunities that exist and some projects that we as a community can put together. That's really the biggest thing. All of us here, even though we only know each other maybe by our online names or we know each other uh, just by uh, seeing ourselves in this chat window that we have or maybe we watch the services and we don't uh, get involved in uh, the actual chat dialogue, we're a community here. Um, we are all actively engaged in each other's lives. and. Um, it's really important that we be able to interact with each other in, as a community and be able to create that. And I want all of you guys to be involved. So I need your help. We need your help. Uh, like I said, we've got about five people on board. We need more help with that. We want to know ways that you think you can help. Um, the one thing that I get the most is people saying, um, you know, I don't know how I can help. I don't know, you know, how I'm able to contribute. Um, People don't think that they can get involved. They're not sure what their talents are. And I assure you that you have talent. Punctora just got started because I knew how to use YouTube. That's one sort of simple thing. Uh, I've had to learn everything else as I went along. So here are some things that we need some help with. Graphic design, writing articles. Um, we need some help with fundraising, really need some help with fundraising. Our goal is to raise $4,000 to be able to make this project work. Uh, so that's something. Uh, doing some speaking engagements in your community, setting those up, those can really help a lot. Um, you know, do you know Hebrew? Would you be interested in maybe reading Hebrew uh, online? Maybe you can read the Torah portion. Um, so that's, you know, an interesting way of um, doing something. Um, anything. There are so many different ways. Think of what a synagogue does. You can do those things, and we can do them entirely online, and we can do them better, and we can do them for anyone who needs them. So that's a really great opportunity where all of us can help each other. So think about it. Here in the chat session, if you're involved, please um, 
you know, please post what you'd be willing to do. I'm going to give you an email address. This is Michael, otherwise known as the Alterna Rebbe. And Michael um, is kind of leading uh, the path as far as who does what and getting involved in you know, different projects that we're up to, whether it's you think you can help with fundraising or you want to write an article about something or uh, you're a great photographer and you want to give us some photos to put up on the site or, uh, you know, whatever. You want to share some kind of experience or you uh, have uh, some knowledge of technology that you think would be great. Uh, some other examples. Do you do any rituals at home? Do you light Shabbos candles uh, on Friday night? If so, make a little video of it. Send it to us. Uh, would you want to lead a discussion on something on Facebook? We could do that. There are so many different ways that you could contribute. So it's very, very important. Um, so please post what you're interested in. Let us know. Send Michael an email and let's go on ahead and get this going. If you honestly don't feel like you can contribute anything time-wise, I think financially that would be a really great thing that you could help us with. Any little donation can help. Like I said, we're trying to raise $4,000 to make this project happen. So if you can help uh, with that, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, Steve, um, I think that this is great. We're actually going to be using a program called Indiegogo. Um, which I think is going to be a really great uh, way for us to fundraise, which will be very similar to Kickstarter. Um, so I think that that's a really cool thing. Um, David, it looks like, yeah, you've been posting links on Jewish forums about Punk Torah. That's great. You know, when we get one shul started, do some street team work. Print out some little flyers. We can email them to you. You can print them out, put them on the bulletin board of the coffee shop at work, or uh, go to your synagogue, post them in the synagogue bulletin board, or send out an email to your friends. All of those ways can help. But if you really want to be involved in leadership, if you really want to be a founding member of a synagogue, please, please, please get actively involved. Um, and let us know what you think you can do. And if you're just not sure, we'll tell you what to do, if that helps you. Some people, they, they need a little help knowing what to do. And that's fine, too. We'll help you in any way we can. Um, you know, what other issues do we have here? So, Steve, you asked a question about Kabbalistic meditation. Um, I have not personally read a lot of books on it. I tend to go more online. But um, Zalman Schechter... Uh, Shlomi, who is the founder of Jewish Renewal, has done a lot with Jewish meditation. Um, Michael knows a lot about that guy and reads a lot of his books. Um, I believe that Arthur Green is another good person to go to, but uh, Zalman is really the big Jewish meditation guy. He's an old hippie, you know, orthodox uh, guy who eventually started the Renewal Movement, which I can only describe as um, non-orthodox Hasidism is the best way to, to kind of describe it. So I would really look into what he does. Um, that's going to be really, really good. Um, you know, what else is going on in people's lives? Does anyone else have anything that they want to talk about? Otherwise, I'll just keep going on about, uh, um, I'll keep going on about one shul. We'll just keep talking about that because that's, you know, a big thing. Jewish Lights, you know, that's really, really good. Jewish Lights has some great stuff. Uh, JPS, is really good. You can go on the JPS website, Jewish Publication Society, and um, you know you'll be able to find some things there. Um, so then another thing we have here, Steve mentions uh, Hillel outreach. Uh, absolutely, we need to let Hillels know. Oh, honestly, we don't really do a lot. Um, we don't really do a lot with Hillel. Um, you know, our day job is just running Punctura. So, you know, we're here um, in my office or we're at Michael's office or we work out of the Birthright uh, Israel office. And so, um, you know, really hooking up with Hillel's would be fantastic. And see, that's a perfect example. If you're a person who wanted to get involved in outreach that way, you know, you wanted, oh, you, you did mean Birthright, okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, perfect thing. There you go. Maybe that's something you'd like to do. Maybe that's a place where, um, uh, maybe that's where you could be helpful, is doing something like that. 
um, and we'd love to see it. Maybe you're an outreach person, and certainly that'd be great. That really, really helps a lot. Uh, David, I'm sorry to hear about uh, your partner not getting the job at the church. Um, you know, that's tough. It, it, it's a hard time, too. The economy is really terrible. And I really, really, um, you know, hope that everyone's able to find something that they enjoy and will be able to make a living doing that. One thing I wanted to mention, just completely unrelated to Punctura, I guess in a way it's related, is um, do what you love and the money will follow. I know that's um, considered sort of trite and all of that, but really um, I've been in the ups and downs of the economy more than anyone can imagine because I've been self-employed for such a long time and then finally was able to land uh, this job um, with Punctura and really do what you're passionate about, even if you don't make money at it. Now, maybe you need to work a little day job here or day job there to, uh, you know, uh, to be able to make the ends meet. But, you know, Michael and I did this volunteer, and now it's our day job. So you never know, you know, what's going to happen. Um, Steve, so you're mentioning, yeah, that you live in the five boroughs in New York. There's no shortage of Kirov. You know, that's absolutely true. However, I would also say that a lot of times, and I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine about this, when you are in a Jewish community, and I experience this every now and then, I've got my Jewish community here in Atlanta, um, but I enjoy being a part of this community a lot um, because I live and work in Atlanta and I have a physical community here, but I get a lot spiritually out of this community. Uh, sometimes the social aspects of having a Jewish job um, take a little bit away spiritually from a physical community and it's nice to uh, have something like this uh, which is purely spiritual for me um, in that sense so um, I don't think we as a community should be afraid at all um, you know to be able to um, you know move back and forth um, you know, yeah, exactly like you're saying, Steve, that one flows from the other, physical to spiritual and vice versa. Um, you know, it's very nice for me to have um, this kind of community. I really appreciate you guys more than you know. I love being able to go online and uh, talk to you guys and uh, be a part of your community because really that's the thing. Michael and I, you know, sure, we started Punctora, the website, but you guys are our community. We are a community together, all of us. Um, don't, uh, don't ever allow that to um, be diminished by the fact that this is on the internet. Um, who else do you see three times a week just to be spiritual um, you know, with each other? Uh, David, you said, I like dialogue with folks away from my shul and minion buddies. Don't want to get stuck in a pattern. Absolutely. That's great, too. That's why I'm always trying to do different things with the prayer service is to, you know, make it something, um, you know, a little bit different. Uh, Jano, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, you're thinking about becoming a pastry chef. That's awesome. Go for it. Um, hard work. I will say, though, my parents were in the restaurant business. Being a pastry chef is not easy, but it sounds delicious. So go for it. Um, if that's your passion in life, then God will take you in that direction. My only question is, if you're making uh, pastry all the time and you're taste testing it, how many times a day would you end up saying hamotzi? I'm just curious. Uh, Jewishjobs.com, great website. Yeah, you can find some good resources on there. Thank you, Steve for uh, posting that. And David, if you do get the job um, as uh, the taste tester for Jano, then uh, definitely I want to get in on that. We can have a uh, Punctura pastry uh, eating session sometime. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, um, yeah, so I hope everyone's excited about this idea of one shul. Um, I really want everyone to participate in this. This is our community. And it may seem like this is just an internet thing, but think about it. Think about the day when you can tell uh, your grandkids or you can tell uh, the children of the uh, uh, people that are first involved with Punctura, you know, and one show, you know, I was a part of something really big. Um, what an amazing thing to be able to say one day that you are a founding member of the world's first internet synagogue. I mean, that's a huge thing. That's a really profound opportunity there. Um, 
And don't worry about feeling like you can't contribute. You can. Every person in the world has a talent. They just don't know it. Or we diminish it because we think, oh, I could never be someone like Michael or someone like Patrick or someone like Pamela or Rivka or whomever. You know, be, uh, be able to uh, put yourself in a position of authority. Be able to, you know, say to yourself, you know, yeah, I'm empowered to do something. Um, our culture, I think, likes to diminish people. We like to think that we could never be good enough to be a celebrity, a politician, a, a, a famous whatever, a business person. Um, but, you know, this is a great time in our history, especially with the recession, because now is a time where we get to be bootstrappers and we get to pick ourselves up and we get to fight adversity. Um, it's when things are at their best that we become the most sluggish. It's when we start giving ourselves up to materialism and giving ourselves up to um, other people doing things for us because we have that luxury. Now is your chance. With all of these JCCs closing, with all of these shoals closing, now is your opportunity. And I really hope you will accept that and be a part of that. So anyway, that's my big speech. Um, you know, uh, David, you're saying, uh, the conservative movement has said that a Jew has no access to a physical minion, can say Kaddish for a loved one via cyber minion. Absolutely. Bingo. There we go. We got some halakha right there that says that what we're doing is good. And I'll be honest with you, I've, the way that I approach anything that I do, whether it's work or personal or, you know, creative with my band, is I think, why has someone else not done what I have, what I am planning on doing? I pretty much take for granted that no idea that I ever have is original, and so I think about that. I'm like, why have how why has someone not done this? And I do my research, and the reason why no one has ever tried to create an online synagogue is because the people that have had the authority to create online synagogues don't want to see them exist. They want the marble floors. They want the, you know, oak paneling. They want the gold signs everywhere. They want this physical stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Why are they so afraid of us? Why, why have these big movements in Judaism been unwilling to do something that the five, six, ten people uh, who are participating in this online minion three days a week willing to do? And uh, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting question. I think the reason why is sheer terror, because they know if people like us feel empowered, uh, if they think that we are able to create something substantial online, um, but it, it challenges them, it challenges their authority. No one in a position of power ever wants their authority challenged, but that's our job. Our job is to take all of these people who deserve a community, who have a moral right to a community, and give it to them. I think about the few times that I've been to synagogues where they tell people to shake hands after a certain number of prayers. What a terrible thing. What an awful thing that we have to be told to be a community. Whereas you have something like this where we already are a community. You know, we're already talking online. We're already emailing each other or posting on Facebook. Um, that's real. That's not artificial. That's not marble floors and gold pillars. That's the, that's the real deal. That's, I think, where the spirit is and where God is. Um, now, it's time for the sales pitch. And that's that we are a nonprofit organization. Michael and I spend a lot of time working on this. It's you know, all we commit ourselves to. And it's very hard to do that. So I would really appreciate it if you would be willing to support us in this cause. Um, $4,000 is the amount that we need to raise to make this happen. Any little bit that you are willing to give helps. 4000 sounds like a lot, but I tell you what, $40 times 100 is a lot easier. So I'm going to give you our PayPal link right here. It's punktora at gmail.com is our PayPal link. Anything you can do, any little amount, we really, really appreciate it. It's going to help us get towards that $4,000 goal so that we can make this happen. Um, 
outside of that, like I said before, any way that you want to contribute with your time, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, again, you just need to email Michael, michael at punktora.org, and uh, we'll be able to set you up with your own online name and password and your own uh, one shoal email address so that you'll be able to be a representative of one shoal in whatever capacity that you'd like. Um, and we're a transdenominational community. So if you're Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, wherever you are in your walk with God, you can participate and be a part of uh, this movement that we have here online. So I hope everyone will consider that. All right, um, I think we're going to wrap this up in just a little bit. Does anyone else have any uh, stuff they want to talk about, anything that's going on in your life, uh, any special prayers we need to say uh, for anybody? Um, if you missed any of the davening that we did earlier, we can repeat it. Uh, whatever uh, you would like, just let me know. Otherwise, we will uh, call it an afternoon, and we will see each other uh, again on Wednesday. So let me know. Um, and, uh, yeah, we will do that. I think that uh, everyone's pretty much happy with what we've done today, so... Um, yeah, just send in those emails. You know, let us know what you're up to. Let us know how we can help you. Um, send in those PayPal donations. I know it's annoying, and you know we're all in weird states of uh, joblessness or uh, underemployment or whatever the case is. But you know, help us have this community. Uh, let's make this a real thing. Um, I guess the only other big piece of news that we have going on, we have a new writer, uh, Emily Sachs, who's really cool. She's going to start doing a Sunday music review uh, twice a month uh, called Juice Sounds, which is really cool. The first um, uh, article is going to go up, I think, next Sunday. Um, that's going to be, um, it's going to be themed every week. So this week coming up is going to be Jerusalem. Uh, and then after that, there's going to be another. Um, there's going to be another post uh, the week after that that's going to be um, on uh, instant dance parties, uh, music, uh, Jewish music that moves you to dance. So that's going to be pretty cool as well. So anyway, all right. Well, you know what? I guess that wraps it up. Um, if anyone wants to chat after the broadcast is over, that's great. We can do that. Otherwise, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see you again Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for participating in this community. You are Punk Torah, and we're glad to have you. Baruch Hashem. Rock and roll.